let's talk about a somewhat unusual type of problem involving radicals, and that is problems where you are taking the square root or the cubed root or the fourth root or whatever of something that has an exponent. So for example, here we have the square root of negative six squared. So we have the square root of something that is squared. And so I've got a handful of problems here that I want to go over. And so in order to be able to answer these problems, which really they're very easy problems, you uh, sort of have to understand what a square root means and what an exponent means. So of course a square root means uh, a number multiplied by itself. And then negative six squared means negative six times negative six. So we could rewrite this if we wanted to as negative six times negative six. That's what negative six squared means, is negative six times itself. And so when you're doing a square root, what you're looking for is uh, something multiplied by itself. Well, here we have something multiplied by itself. We have negative six multiplied by negative six. And the answer then, the square root of negative six times negative six, you would think would be negative six. Negative six is a very reasonable guess uh, for an answer to this problem, I think. But the answer is not actually negative six. The answer is the absolute value of negative six, which is positive six. So let's think about that for a little bit. Why is the answer uh, positive six? Why are we not allowed to leave the answer as negative six? And the reason is that our index in this problem, and if you'll recall, the index is the number of the root. For example, this is a square root, so the index is two. The next problem we're gonna do has an index of three. If the index is even, if we have an even number, that means the root cannot be uh, negative. You can't take a square root or a fourth root or a sixth root and get a negative answer. That's one of the rules of radicals. With an odd index, negatives are totally fine. With an even index, you cannot get an answer that is negative. Uh, so whenever you have an even index, like a square root, you, you can find the answer. In this case, the uh, answer we thought was negative six. That's a great beginning answer, but when the index is negative, you have to take the absolute value of that answer to get positive six as uh, what the actual root is. Another way to think about this is if we did negative six times negative six, negative six multiplied by negative six is positive 36. And the square root of positive 36 is not negative six, it's six. And so uh, we'll discuss uh, later on some uh, sort of exceptions, some situations in which it's okay to have a negative answer, but we're not quite there yet. So for now, um, if the index is even, your answer has to be positive. And we use the absolute value marks to indicate that. Now this next problem is the cubed root of negative 27 cubed. This is an odd index, which means negative answers are totally fine. So negative 27 cubed is the same thing as negative 27 times negative 27 times negative 27, three times. And the answer to this would be just negative 27. Hopefully you're seeing the pattern. Uh, here we had the square root of something squared, and so we just used this number. Here we have the cubed root of something cubed, and so we just used this number, which is negative 27. Now in this problem, it's totally fine to just write the answer as negative 27. Since the index is odd, negative numbers are totally fine. We don't need to take the absolute value if the index is an odd number, like a cubed root. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. The square root of 16x squared. And it may look at first like this one does not follow the patterns of the last two. This was the square root of something squared. This was the cubed root of something cubed. And this is the square root of, and then the x is squared, but 16 is not. However, we can do something kind of tricky right here, because we're tricky, tricky mathematicians. 16 is the same thing as four squared. So we can rewrite this problem as the square root of four squared times x squared and that's totally fine. We're absolutely allowed to do this, and we can split this up using some of our uh, radical rules we've learned already. We can split that into two different radicals. And then this follows the same rules as before. The square root of four squared is four, and the square root of x squared is x. 
So uh, a really good guess here might be that the answer is 4x. 4x is really close to what the answer is. But remember, we have to ensure that all of our numbers are positive since we had an even index. Since the index was 2, we have to make sure that our answer is only positive numbers. And you may think to yourself, well, yeah, 4x is positive. It's a positive 4. And you're right, 4 is positive. But we need to make sure that x is positive. Since x is a variable, that means we could put any number we want to in there for x. I could replace x with negative 17, and then I'd have a positive times a negative, and my answer would be negative. And I'm not allowed to have a negative answer. So the way that I uh, show that that's not going to happen is the 4 is fine. I leave the 4 alone, and the x is the thing that goes inside the absolute value mark. So what I'm saying is, you can put whatever you want in there for x. x is a just standard regular old variable. You're allowed to put anything you want in there for x, but whatever you put in there, I'm going to take the absolute value of it. So if you put in a positive, it's going to stay positive, and if you put in a negative, these absolute value marks are going to make it a positive number so that both the 4 and the x have to be positive. So we got to be careful here that we uh, make sure that all of our answer is going to be positive no matter what if the index is even. If the index is odd, we don't care. If the index is even, we have to make sure that our answer is going to be positive. Let's do one more kind of tricky one, just to make sure you've got the hang of it. Here's one that's the fourth root of something to the fourth power. So since it is a fourth root, four is even. We have an even index. That means our answer is going to involve absolute value marks to make sure our answer is positive. And hopefully you've gotten the pattern down by now. Uh, if you remember that x minus 1 to the 4th power is uh, not x to the 4th. This is not the square root of x to the 4th minus 1 to the 4th. Don't ever do this. Good lord, a, uh, a kitten dies every time you do this. Don't ever make this mistake. What this actually equals, but maybe I should, I'm just going to put a big box around here and say not this with a sad face. Don't ever do that. What uh, x minus 1 to the 4th power actually means is x minus 1 times itself 4 times. So this is x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 1. Okay, so that is what x minus 1 to the 4th actually means. And so when you take the 4th root of x minus 1 to the 4th, the answer is x minus 1. But we had an even index. We need to make sure that our answer is going to be even. So... Uh, don't put the absolute value marks around the x and then around the minus 1. This minus sign, just like from when we dealt with rational functions, this minus sign is the holy bond. You cannot separate the x and the minus 1. They're stuck together by the bond of minus sign. So we put the whole thing inside the absolute value marks to say, you can put whatever you want for x and then subtract 1 from it, but I'm going to make the whole thing positive when you're done. So here is the final answer, the absolute value of x minus 1.